Chelsea Green Presents The Psychology of Totalitarianism by Matthias Desmet Read by Dan Crew Introduction To write a book about totalitarianism, the idea first occurred to me on November 4, 2017. Or rather, it first appeared then in my scientific diary, a notebook I used to scribble down anything that might be useful for a later article or book. At the time, I was staying at a chalet in the Ardennes, owned by a couple of friends. In the early morning hours, as the rising sun illuminated the surrounding woods, I opened my diary to write down thoughts that had spun during the night. Perhaps it was the peace and quiet of the natural environment that made me more sensitive than usual. But on that November morning, I was gripped by the palpable and acute awareness of a new totalitarianism that had left its seed and made the fabric of society stiffen. Even by 2017, it could no longer be denied. The grip of governments on private life was growing tremendously fast. We were experiencing an erosion of the right to privacy, especially since 9-11. Alternative voices were increasingly censored and suppressed, particularly in the context of the climate debate. The number of intrusive actions by security forces was rising dramatically and more. It was not only governments behind these developments, however. The rapid emergence of woke culture and the growing climate movement was giving rise to the call for a new, hyper-strict government that emerged from within the population itself. Terrorists, climate changes, heterosexual men, and, later, viruses were considered too dangerous to be tackled with old-fashioned means. The technological tracking and tracing of populations became increasingly acceptable and was even deemed necessary. The dystopian vision of the German-Jewish philosopher Hannah Arendt loomed at society's horizon. The emergence of a new totalitarianism, no longer led by flamboyant mob leaders such as Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler, but by dull bureaucrats and technocrats. That November morning, I drafted the blueprint for a book in which I would explore the psychological roots of totalitarianism. At the time, I wondered, why did totalitarianism as a form of statehood emerge for the first time in the first half of the 20th century? And moreover, what is the difference between it and the classical dictatorships of the past? The essence of this difference, I realized, lies within the field of psychology. Dictatorships are based on a primitive psychological mechanism, namely on the creation of a climate of fear amongst the population, based on the brutal potential of the dictatorial regime. Totalitarianism, on the other hand, has its roots in the insidious psychological process of mass formation. Only a thorough analysis of this process enables us to understand the shocking behaviors of a totalitarianized population including an exaggerated willingness of individuals to sacrifice their own personal interests out of solidarity with the collective, i.e. the masses, a profound intolerance of dissident voices, and pronounced susceptibility to pseudoscientific indoctrination and propaganda. Mass formation is, in essence, a kind of group hypnosis that destroys individuals' ethical self-awareness and robs them of their ability to think critically. This process is insidious in nature. Populations fall prey to it unsuspectingly. To put it in the words of Yuval Noah Harari, most people wouldn't even notice the shift toward a totalitarian regime. We associate totalitarianism mainly with labor, concentration, and extermination camps, but those are merely the final, bewildering stage of a long process.